So today we'll be looking at control flow. While we looked at classes last time, and I said that that's probably one of the most fundamental aspects of object-oriented programming, structuring our code into relevant classes, control flow might be the most important part of all of programming. So if we look at our code in front of us today, um, we have this starting point here, um, where we have a harbor, boat, Persian, and color. Um, Harbor boat and Persian are all classes. And as you can see, the color um, box rectangle here in Blue Jay, that one, uh, has this uh, enum thing in, uh, over it, which is what it, this is. So this is an enum. Um, and we'll look more at this in a second. So if you want to follow along here, this starting point we have in front of us right now. Uh, is available in the description, so you can download this starting point and develop it as we go along. Uh, as uh, usual, the final product is also available for download in the description. And at the end of this, there will be a challenge. Um, so there will be some code that's left for you to fill out in the final product as well. And we'll look at that in the next video, possible ways of solving that. And it'll be possible to see if your solution is correct because there'll be associated test classes but we'll look at that in the very end. Right now, let's just run through the code we have today. So if we start by this new thing, this enum, so we get a sense of what that's all about. Let's go into this. An enum is basically just a type that can take a couple of predefined um, specific um, identities, right? So a color can be blue, red, green, black, or white, and that's it. Uh, and then we have a bit of extra code here associated with the enum. This isn't really the core of what an enum in is. This is just to make it simpler for us to um, to use it uh, later. All of this is just here to let us easily select a random one of these colors. So the color enum, you can say color dot random, and it'll just give you a random color. That's all of this. But this is all you need for an enum. It just defines that these are possible colors. Um, again, in the overview, we have um, these lines you can see, right? So boat has a line down to Persian and a line down to color. And that's because boat has a color, of course, but it also has an associated Persian, which is the owner of the boat. If we quickly go into boat and have a look, uh, we can see that there's a lot of stuff in here. Obviously, um, and the core variables here, uh, the state that a boat can take, it can have an owner, a name, and a color, right? And then we just have a bunch of different ways of constructing a boat, right? These are all constructors, right? Uh, I heard it do what I wanted. There. there we go. These are all constructors that can make a boat. So we can make a boat with no input, which will just have no owner set to null, so nothing specified. We'll have the string unnamed as its name, and again, just a random color. And we can also just specify all these things by hand, but those are just constructors. It can also return its owner, this getOwner function here. And if we go into the Persian object real quick, we can see that Persian has an h, an int, and a string, which is the name, right? And again, here we have constructors for it in different ways of constructing a Persian. Um, and it also has get h, which just returns the h. So that's what we need to know to get started with this tutorial. I will go into the harbor. And this one is just empty. So this is where we'll be writing our code right now. Um, actually, it's not entirely true that it's empty because I did add this line up top, import java.util.star. What this does is it allows us to use the utility functions in Java from the util package. So .star just means import everything in the util package. Um, and this is just to make some extra functionality available for us. 
So let us begin. And the first thing we want to do is to have our harbor contain a list of all the boats in the harbor. Um, so we, we could say that it has an associate. Oh, let's do some proper indentation here. So we could say that it has a boat, boat one, and another boat, boat two, and so on, and specify them that way. But the issue quickly becomes apparent that this only gives us a fixed amount of boats that we can have in here. Uh, this is two, but we could continue it, but we'd always be stuck with a particular number of boats that we've specified. So let's clear this out again. And we'll instead use list boat. Oh, sorry, capital B, boat, boats, right? And this comes from this java.util package here. This is uh, called a collection type, list. So list here is um, an abstract class. We discussed that in the last video. And this ankle bracket notation here, uh, where we write boat inside, um, has to do with a concept called generics, which means that um, list can operate on anything um, and in this case, we just specify that it is a list of boats, but we could also say that it's a list of integers or a list of object, which just means it can hold anything. But in this case, it is a list of boats, right? Um, another thing we'll use, and this is again from the util uh, package, is we'll do some things with random variables. So we'll have a random, call it random, and that's, just, that's just, actually let's just initialize it right here. We'll use the new keyword, and the new keyword is essentially the same as when we go right click, uh, well that one can't compile it, when we right click in here and click new boat, um, the new keyword in Java code is the same as doing that. So we'll connect to the harbor um, a new instance of random, bam, that's it, All right? <clears throat> so, now let's construct a harbor. So let's say harbor, a constructor, right? You remember. What do we need here? We need to create one of these lists for our boats, because right now it's only declared, right? We haven't set this um, boats list equal anything. It's just declared that we need to have it. So we need to make this equal something. And it needs to be of this type list. So just like when we uh, created a new random just above, we'll say boats equals new. And then you might be tempted to say list but as I mentioned, list is an abstract class. So we, we need a concrete class of type list. And we can use this one called array list. And we'll specify again here. Yeah, you can again write boat in here, but because we've already said that it's a list of boats of above, we don't need to do that. Uh, it just figures out that there used to be boat inside these. And that's it. Now the clever part in using list as the type of boats in the declaration up here is that if we change our minds later on and don't want to use an array list, we find out that some other type of list is better suited to our needs. All we need to do is change this here to whatever other type of list we want. Um, and all the rest of the code will work just the same. It's all just operations on a list. It just so happens to be an array list. So now we have this new but empty list, right? Let's make a method here. Um, it does nothing, so it returns, or well, it does do something, but sorry, small b. Um, it's a method that doesn't return anything, so we'll specify the return type void, and it's just called fill harbor, right? So it, what we want to do in here is we want to fill up the harbor with random boats. And this is where we get to what's a, what's called a loop, right? Loop. 
And there are several kinds of loops. Um, the first one we'll be using here is a for loop, um, which means that we'll just execute the same bit of code a certain number of times. So we'll say for int i equals zero, um, i uh, less than 10, i plus plus, open curly bracket, closing curly bracket. So if I ask you how many times is the code inside this for loop, anything we put here, how many times will that be run? <clears throat> now, you can answer that it'll be run 10 times, and that'll be correct. It will be run 10 times. But some of you might also think that it's going to run nine times, because we're saying that it runs for as many times as i is less than 10, right? And we keep incrementing i plus plus, we add one to i every time. This might look a bit weird. Plus plus is just uh, the same as saying plus equal one. So the previous bet, or in other words, i equals i plus one, that's the same. All of that's the same. It's just a shorthand. So um, to explain why it's only nine times, it's because we include the zero we start on. Right? So it says 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, which is 10 iterations. So let's go into the loop body here um, and say what we want to happen these 10 times. So what we want to do is we want to create a person, P. This will be the owner of the boat, right? And we'll say the person p equals a new person. And this is where the random variable comes in because we want to give this person a random age when we make him. So we'll say the age of this person, this new person, will be random the next int because we want the next random integer. And it'll be an integer uh, automatically between zero and whatever we enter in here. So we'll say it's between zero and 60, All right? But we don't want to have like infants in this list, right? We want them to at least have a certain age before they're buying a boat that otherwise it doesn't really make sense. So say that the people who buy boats are between the ages of zero and 60 plus 18. So we'll actually wind up with, um, oh, and the 60s and don't include it, right? It's from zero to 52 and, and including 59 or two and not including 60. So when we add 18 to that, we'll have that the people who own boats, the person P object, will be between the age of zero and 59, plus 18, which is 18 to 77. And we'll close it off. Then we'll make a boat, B equals new boat, which will just have the person P and the name Boaty Mac Boat Face. So now all our boats are just called Boaty Mac Boat Face, but it doesn't really matter because right now we're only interested in uh, doing things with the owner anyway for demonstration purposes. All right. Um, now, we've now created the boats and the owners but we haven't actually added them to our list of boats, right? So to do that, we'll take the list that was named boats and we'll run the add method on it. And we'll add our boat B and that's it. Now the method fill harbor will fill the harbor with 10 boats. We'll also have a method called clear harbor and all we need to do to clear it right is to take the boats list and set it equal to a new array list and that's it so now we've had a look at how we can use loops to produce the same bit of code several times now we'll have a look at if statements because if I'm telling you that we want a function, again, just void, 
um, that will print owners younger than 30. And what we want to happen here is that for all the boats whose owner is younger than 30, print the age to the terminal, all right? And that's exactly how we'll write it out as well. We'll say for, and this is a different type of for loop. Here we'll say for a boat, named boat, inside the list of boats. Oh, boats, there we go. All right, you can see this is a significantly simpler type of loop, right? We don't declare an int and uh, iterate it up, uh, increment it upwards and check condition on it. All we're saying is that for all the boats in this array, create a boat called boat, or there will be a boat that represents it called boat. And that's what we'll work with in the code, right? This little notation here, the uh, colon, just means inside of a list type, a collection type. So we can say that in here we'll say boat dot get owner dot get age, um, and actually we don't just want to get it all. We want to have before that system dot out dot print line, all right? So in here we can see that for it'll run through all of the boats and it'll print to the screen boat owner and then the age of that owner, all right? It'll go into the boat, get the owner, get the age, and that's what that's what will be printed, right? But that's not exactly what we specified here. This will just print everything. All of the ages of all of the owners. What we want to do is to, inside of the loop, say if the boat dot get owner um, dot get age is less than 30, Again, open curly brackets to indicate the body of this. Then we want to do this. Um, and based on that, I think, there we go, just proper indentation. So if we go back to the overview, and we make a new harbor, new harbor. If I just immediately print owners younger than 30, it'll print nothing to the screen because we haven't filled the harbor yet. But if we go in here and we click fill harbor, there'll now be 10 boats in the harbor. So when I click print owners younger than 30, we get 21 and 28, both ages under 30. And we can repeat this and say, um, clear the harbor, fill harbor, print and in that case there was only one 26 um, we'll just clear it out to make it a bit more logical. Um, and actually just to prove a point if I don't fill it with new content and don't clear it and I'll print again it'll be the same 26 that printed because it's the same boats in the harbor right you can also just keep filling it now there's 20 now there's 30 now all I know now is that the first number will be 26 I don't know what else there'll be but See, 26 is the first, and then 22 and 27. Um, <clears throat> clear this up. If I go back to the code, and I remove this if statement, and I remove that, we compile again, and again, make our new harbor, <clears throat> and we fill it up, there should now be exactly 10 things printed. So 65, 45, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, And if my counting is right, it fits. One second. Yeah, it fits. Now that's it for the primary lesson of today. But before we move on to look at the challenge that I'm putting up for today, uh, we'll just look at one more thing, which is about Boolean 
uh, logic and Boolean truth. So let's have a look. So this is just text edit, where it's just, just a basic te text editor, right? So uh, this won't do code checking or anything because what we're going to talk about now is more general principles. Uh, I will be using Java syntax, sort of, um, but it's more general truth uh, about programming, right? So uh, when we've talked about type, there's this concept of a Boolean type in Java and many other languages, right? Um, and just to be consistent with Java, that's like small b, um, because it's a um, not primary, I'm looking for a word, not primary type, but um, ah, that word's totally out of my mind, but um, primitive type, that's it. So uh, we'll have a Boolean b, and we can def define that to be the truth or false, right? I'm just going to emit the semicolon just because it's easier right now. So we just say that one's full and we have another one. Let's just call this one B1 for consistency. That one's true. Now, if we were to do something like an if statement, we could do like B1. So if B1 is true, which it's clearly not, but then whatever's in here would be executed. But this wouldn't be executed because B1 is false, right? We could then have an else block, which would then be what would be executed. We can also do an else if, where a second condition could be tested for, right? But if we just drop that for a while and just look at this if block, um, there are some things we can do with Boolean logic, right? Because right now we're just saying if B1, which is false, do something. But we can also say things like if B1, or B2 is true. So just one of these two have to be true. And this will be evaluated. evaluated. Um, this ASCII DJL nothing bullet like will be a run. Or um, we can also do an AND operator, right? This means that both B1 and B2 need to be true before this line will be executed. So that's sort of the primary thing about Boolean logic, right? We have an AND operator and an OR operator. And with that, we can do tremendous kinds of things, right? Um, now, another Boolean operator is the exactly equals operator, right? So if I say we have two integers, 5, and uh, we say equal equal 10, this will evaluate to false. This will evaluate to true. So this also works in um, assignment. So instead of saying that B1 equals false, I could say that B1 equals five ex is exactly equal to five. And that would then evaluate to true. Well, that would evaluate to false. So this assignment would still be a valid Boolean. You can also do things like greater than equal, or just greater than or less than, equal, less than, either one works. Um, and then there's, well, let's just insert full two. Then there's one more thing I'd like to mention before we move on to the challenge for today, which is objects, because objects work a bit differently with this. As I mentioned, Boolean and int for that matter are primitive types, and primitive types and object types work a bit differently. So uh, on an on a primitive type, like an int, we can go 5 equals equals 5, and that would be true. But if I take uh, a, what would be a Persian object, right, p equals equals p, this doesn't just check, check that uh, each value inside them is the same. So even if like both p's here uh, have the same age and the same name, and that's all that there is to a person, this might still value to false, because this test that these are exactly the same. So even if we go like new Persian, new Persian, and these are created the exact same way, they have the exact same constructor and they result to basically identical objects, right? This would be false because they are two new operators. So they'll be placed two different spots in memory uh, which will mean that this equal equal operator 
will check where they are in memory. Uh, now on objects, uh, you can define a equals method, which is often how people go around this. So if you don't want to check that they are in this, uh, they, they're the exact same object in memory, but you just want to check that they uh, conform to like the same basic values, that they're in the same state, you'll often use the dos, dot equals method here. And you have to define it yourself um, generally. There are, but um, basically all of the built-in uh, or built-in, the, the Java types, uh, like string objects and such, will have this by default. So if you want to check that two strings are the same text, um, you don't want to just do what well, might seem natural, like hello equals equals hello. This might actually work because they are string literals, um, but if we had defined them like this, use them down here in the uh, if block or if condition, I should say. That might actually evaluate to false because they could be two different spots in memory. So instead, you wanted to do that. Um, I think that's all I want to mention uh, real quick, uh, just to make sure that the Boolean operators are understood. You don't necessarily need to know all that to do the challenges, but it can make your solutions a bit uh, slicker and more elegant. But you can do them with everything we discussed before this point. So it's not necessary, it was just an aside for the Boolean logic to be well understood by people. Um, and if you don't understand it, perfectly fine. As I mentioned, it's not necessary at this point, it's not necessary for the challenge, and we can look at it later again. Um, it was just a quick little introduction to Boolean logic. So let's have a look at the challenge for today. You can download this uh, challenge point in the description as well. Just like you can download the starting point to code along, you can download the code as it is right here and do the challenge. Um, this will include a BlueJack package file so everything is set up as well and not just the source files um, to make things a bit easier. And as you'll see, there is this green rectangle with the name unit test, right? And this challenge box will hold the verification for whether your challenge is complete. You don't need to read the code in here. It's completely irrelevant. All you need to know is that if you right click it, you can run test all, or you can test individual parts of the challenge for today. So for instance, if I run test first owner between 20 and 30, which is one of the challenges, it'll show this menu here where you can see the red line, which means that you haven't completed the challenge correctly. And it shows up here um, what it failed with. And if we double click it, I it used to do that for me. It might work for you, but when I double clicked it earlier at least, it put me at where the error was in the code. Um, apparently that's not working right now, but you can see a stack trace down here as well, where you can see uh, which part of the test failed, which might help. Um, but in any case, it's clear with the method name what, is, what it is that's gone wrong. So if we look at where you're supposed to fill in the challenge in the harbor, down at the bottom, I've made um, three methods for the, for the challenge, these. And right now, they just return generic values, right? So this one returns uh, zero. Uh, this one just returns an empty array list. And this one returns null. So in your challenge, <clears throat> you'll have to make these return what it is. Their name says they all return, right? So this one will return an integer, which is the number of blue boats in the harbor, right? So that's the challenge for that one. This one here, um, this one, your challenge is to very similar to the last one, but instead of returning the number of blue boats, you have to create an array list with the blue boats and return that one. So it'll be a subset of the whole harbor where you only return a list of all the blue boats. And lastly, we have this, this one, 
which will return the first owner in the harbor, the first boat owner. Like uh, if you just list out all the boats, then the first one that has an owner who's between the ages of 20 and 30, and that's inclusive on both ends, right? So 20 is allowed and 30 is allowed as well. Um, and your challenge is just to return the object for the owner, like the, not just the age, but the person object itself. Um, and I want you to notice here that it is possible to have a harbor without any owner between the ages of 20 and 30. And if that's the case, I want you to return no, just like it says right now. So that's the challenge. And I hope you'll have a lot of fun doing it. If you have any trouble doing it, uh, you can send me an email. All my contact information is on the parallelthread.com. Um, you can also leave a comment in the comment section below. I might read it. Uh, if it gets overwhelmed, I probably won't. But uh, initially, I'll probably be able to read a lot of them and respond. But um, that's the challenge. And as I said, I hope you'll have a lot of fun with it. Um, in the next video, I will go through some uh, example solutions. Now, there are many ways of solving different coding problems. So the solution I'm going to show in the next video might not be the same solution that you came up with. That does not mean your solution is wrong. It just means it's a different solution. And I'm probably going to also show um, some more fancy solutions uh, using concepts that we haven't talked about yet. Uh, but I'll also show one that you should be able to do with this information you have now. So with that in mind, um, thanks for watching the video. Do comment, leave a like, um, maybe even share the video if you feel so inclined. Uh, and happy coding! <laughs>